Okay, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration, be regular season number 10. We have the integral from zero to 10, floor function of x times the floor function of x dx. Okay, this is a little bit different than some of the floor problems we've done in the past because in this case, we actually have the floor within the floor. So this is gonna kind of make it a little bit more complicated. But still what I wanna do is use the same trick we've used in a bunch of other problems with the floor function. I'm just gonna break it up so they're going from zero to one and one to two. So that's gonna at least give me simplification with this one right here. So for example, from zero to one, we'll just rewrite this, we're gonna have x, but then the floor of x in this area between zero and one, it's gonna round everything down to zero. So what's gonna happen is this piece right here, this is gonna become a zero. But of course with the zero here, when we multiply it, it's just gonna zero at everything. So this first integral is gonna go away. So then we'll move on to the second one. And for this one, we're just gonna go from one to two. Same thing. But now the floor function here, if we look at this, in this region from one to two, this is gonna round everything down to one. So this piece right here is just gonna go and it's gonna become a one. So I'll put it here as the coefficient. And we can just kind of keep going with this. I don't know if I wanna write all of these, right? I'm not gonna, it's not too bad, we're only going to 10, but I don't wanna just keep writing. But anyway, we're gonna have the same kind of effect where here, this, this floor function here, it's gonna be rounded down to two, so I can write this as like a two X here. And let me just write a few more of these just so that we're clear on what's happening. Now from here, imagine that we have this written out as 10 integrals, even though I took a shortcut right there. Well, the trouble we have is we still have the floor function, all these. Now we can still get a little simplification here because like one X, that's just the same thing as X. And so this one we can do because the floor between one and two, that's gonna round everything down here to one. So this integral actually just becomes one. But now here on the second one, we, still, we start to see the problem where at the upper bound, if you just plug in three here, we have six. If you plug in at the lower bound, we have four. So we're not really rounding to one integer value. We could actually break this up like going from, we could break it up like from two to 2.5. And then what would happen here is everything is gonna round down to four. And then we could do another one of these from 2.5 to three. And notice in this region for two X, this is gonna round down everything to five. And so you just notice that here when our lower bound was two, we split this into two pieces. If we were to look at this integral where the lower bound's three, this one would actually break up into three pieces. So we'd have the same kind of thing happening. We could divide this into three integrals, but then the next one we have to divide it to four and then five, and eventually we're dividing this in nine pieces. So yes, we could write this all, but when we break out, I think it would be 45 integrals. I don't really want to write out 45 integrals and that's a little bit tedious. So what I want to do is just generalize any one of these integrals and see if we can just solve a single integral. Okay, now for the generalization of this, you'll just notice this is really exactly what we had on the previous board. Now I started where n equals one, because originally we had n equals zero, but that integral was zero, so we've eliminated that one. We don't need to include that. And you can just recall from the previous board that our lower bound was the same as this value right here, which was actually the same as this came from this right here. This was where the n came from. And then we broke it up where everything was separated by just one. So we go from n to n plus one. And then from here, just focusing on this integral, what I want to do is just a u substitution. This is kind of optional. I'm just doing it to clean it up, make it kind of easier to visualize, easier to look at. So for my u substitution, we'll just say u equal to nx, just to simplify what we have inside the floor function. I'll take a derivative, so d is just gonna be n times dx, or we can say that dx is gonna be du over n. And then I can just go ahead with this substitution, we'll bring, we'll keep this summation the same in front. Then first, let's update our bounds. So we plug n plus one in here for x, and this is gonna turn into n squared plus n, just multiplying that out. And then we'll plug, and then we'll take n, plug it in here, and we get our u value of just n squared. Now this here is just gonna become the floor of u. And then for dx, we're gonna have du, but for this one over n, I'm just gonna bring this up front because it's because one over n is just a constant value with respect to u. But now that we have it in this form with just u inside the floor function, we can go back to the trick that we used originally, which was just breaking up our integral on integers. So we can just do this with our bounds here. So what I can do to rewrite this, for the first one, we can just go n squared to n squared plus one. And then for the next one, we'll just go we'll break it up again. We'll go from n squared plus one to n squared plus two. And we'll just kind of keep going like this, but we'll just go to our last one. So this last integral is gonna be n squared plus n minus one to our upper bound n squared plus n floor of u. But now because in each case, we've set this up where the difference in our bounds is just one in each of these. So then we can, so then what's gonna happen here with our floor of u, this is gonna round down. So it's gonna round down to our lower bounds. 
So this is going to become n squared. This is going to become n squared plus 1 all the way to this one, which is going to become n squared plus n minus 1. But now again, everything here in blue, these are all constant values. So I can just bring these out front of the integrals in every single one of these cases. And we're actually just integrating one. But when your bounds are only separated by one and you're integrating one, so let's say we have this case here where we're going from say n to n plus one, this is just gonna be x from n plus one to n. And so when you do that out, you just get one. So what's actually gonna happen, every single one of these integrals is just going to be one and we just have we just have to remember these constants that we're bringing out front so when we rewrite this this is just going to turn into a big sum we're going to have we still have this up front that we can't forget we got this one over n but then inside the bracket here the first term is going to be n squared and this one's going to be n squared plus one here i'll just kind of keep it so we understand what's happening then the next one's going to be n squared plus two and then this is going to go all the way out to the end and the last term will just be this one n squared plus n minus one. But now from here, in order to finish this off, we just need to calculate this whole big sum. And the interesting thing to notice is just notice that in every one of these terms, we have n squared. And the other thing to notice is let's just see how many terms we have. Well, you'll kind of see that we're going, we start at one, two, three, all the way to n minus one, but we also have this like zero term here. So, so the number of terms here is actually going to be n. So what I want to do actually is just reorder everything here. And what I can do is pull out all these n squareds but we have n copies of it, so I'll write it as n times n squared or n cubed. And then for all the other terms, we're just gonna have this sum of numbers. We'll just have zero plus one plus two plus three plus all the way to n minus one. But then from here, let's just distribute in this one over n. So what I can do is cancel this with this here. And actually what I'll do is I'll put all this stuff over n just to get rid of it out front here. But then just notice all of this right here. Now just forget about the zero. This is just the sum of the first n natural numbers, or actually the first n minus one natural numbers. So, so we actually have a formula for this. It's just k times k plus one. I'm just trying to use different variable than n all over two. So in order to calculate all this for our case here, like this k value is gonna be n minus one. So what I can do is write this, this whole thing here, I can write as n minus one times n over two. And we can just put that back in there. But then I can cancel n's out right here. This one's just going away. But then now we're just adding and subtracting within a sum. So I can actually break this into three separate sums. So for the first one, I can break this out going from n equals one to nine of the just this first piece, n squared. And then for the second one, I just have this n over two, but I'll bring a half out front here. And I can write this as just summing up n. And then for this last piece here, we've got this minus one half. Subtracting it, we'll just, we'll have it like one half and we'll just put our bounds on it. But now from here, we're gonna have a formula for this. We have a formula for this, and this one's just easy. So let's see if we can just finish this off. Okay, so now we have our formulas on the board for the first k squares here, and the first k natural numbers here. In each of these cases, the k value is gonna be just nine, this upper limit here. So now we can just go ahead and plug in. So here for this one, this is gonna become nine. This here is gonna be 19 over six. Then here, we still have this half out front, then this is gonna become, then this here is gonna become nine times 10 over two. And then for this last one, again, there's no n value here. So this is actually just gonna be nine copies of one half. So nine times a half, this is gonna be minus nine halves over here. And then we just try to get some simplification before we put this together. So I'm gonna cancel two with 10 and get a five here. I'll cancel six as, we'll write this as two times three, but canceling three with nine gives me a three. Canceling two with 10 gives me a five here. Then five times 19 is 95. Three times 95 is gonna be 285. Here we're gonna have nine times five or plus 45 over two minus nine halves. This piece here is gonna be just 36 over two or 18. So then for my final solution, just adding 285 to 18, we get three, zero, three. Okay, there you have it. Good one from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.